This is the Power Break Podcast number 231, titled, A New Beginning. Hi, everyone. I'm Bob Brubaker, along with JT, as we hope you'll stay tuned as we seek to give you a little power in this break to help you succeed in the race of life. This is the Power Break Podcast, with a focus on the spiritual, the mental, and the physical aspects, all to help you succeed in the race of life. For show notes from today's podcast, go to bobrubaker.com and follow the link for the Power Break Podcast. That's right, Bob. I am back. And I hope He's people back. and I hope people miss me. <laughs> they did. I'm sure they although, did. <laughs> although the the two programs that I recorded solo cast are yet to be released. So oh they, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. So so anyway, that, that's the little timing. So uh, when people hear this, JT will have been gone for a while to visit his aunt and take care of her after her surgery. And then he has returned. So now he's on the return, folks. You get the best of it as we begin a new year here on the Power Break Podcast. Welcome back, JT. Thanks, buddy. I missed you, man. Um, But man, it was it was such a good time to be with my aunt. And it was such a great, um, you know, we just really we talked about great things. We talked about God. We talked about faith. We talked about um family and what it means. I mean, really, it was just such a great time. So uh, unfortunately, Bob, and and I know you probably know this better than anybody, sometimes it just takes trials to bring people back together and and make people really appreciate each other, you know, so. That's exactly right. uh, God has a way of doing that to bring us back together for a purpose. And many times it's uh, when the things come in life and we we move move away the barriers that separate us and get back together. Yeah. <clears throat> well, JT, we uh, let's thank our listeners for listening to the Power Break podcast as we begin a new year uh, here on the podcast. Actually, our new year for the podcast will begin in March, uh, f- as we'll start. Um, uh, let's see the fifth year of uh, podcasting, but it's a new Man. year. It's 2023, and as we head into this year, we want to talk about a new beginning. But before we do that, let's thank our listeners for uh, listening to the Power Break podcast. Thank you for sticking with us all these years and for telling others about the podcast. And as we always say, thank you for leaving a rating or a, a review wherever you download the podcast. That does really help. It really does. Yeah. I, um, you know, I've talked about algorithms before. I think I'm going to spare people. It'll be a new beginning. Um, (laughs) but the simple truth is if you get anything out of it, we do appreciate you getting on there. Five star rating or leaving a good review. And, and let me tell you, it does make a huge difference. So, uh, but we are so grateful for you. And I think we're going to talk a little bit about gratitude because, Hey, how can you not talk about gratitude with a new beginning? That's right. It's good to start off the year with a gratitude, and that's why we start out the program uh, each time. We try to this to thank everybody for listening and thank you for telling others about the podcast. So, JT, today we're talking about, and rightly so, because it's a new year, a new beginning. What comes to your mind with that title? You know, it's it's hard for me not to think about what what my aunt and I just talked about. Um, you know, it, it's never too late for you to be closer to God. And that's the thing that's so awesome for me is, um, you know, I think a lot about the story that Jesus told about the master that was hiring servants for his field. Um, and in the morning he, he sent his, um, his right hand man out, out and asked people if they would come work in his field and they agreed. So he did that every hour it seems on the hour until basically closing time and each time he got more people but they ended up obviously working less well at the very end he paid everybody the exact same thing and Mm -hmm. i love what he said he said he said i have done you no wrong friend you and i agreed on this and i gave you exactly what I promised you I would give and you can't basically judge me for choosing to give the same thing to somebody else. Um, and, and really what that whole parable talks about is whenever you come to the kingdom of God, we all are going to get the same thing. 
And I love that. And that's what comes to my mind as, as a new beginning is all of us have that available to us, especially if we're, you know, really struggling with our faith or, or we're not entirely sure, man, it's there. And it doesn't now, there's no better time than now, number one. Um, but you know, whether you come later or whether you grew up in the church, it's there for you. I know that you had a good experience in sharing that with your aunt, and so it's fresh on your mind, and it is what we talk about with a new beginning. No better time than making a new beginning with the Lord Jesus Christ, and if you've ventured away or if you've uh, gone cold or even never have come, it's a good time to um, follow him and hear what he has to say and be serious about taking him him serious in his word. Well, JT, as we talk about that title, I want to say that uh, sometimes we look forward to a fresh start, and that's what the new year brings. A lot of people make some New Year's resolutions. We'll talk more about that, maybe joke about that a little bit later. Uh, silly resolutions that we sometimes make because we're not, we, instead, they're, they're resolutions, they're just thoughts instead of goals that have actually have timelines and, and um uh, also points to make during the during the year. But when we talk about the fresh start, uh, we want to think about what God says about the new beginning in Christ and how we should actually be focused on what are called the old paths. Listen to this verse in Jeremiah 6 and verse 16. Thus says the Lord, stand by the roads and look and ask for the ancient paths where the good way is and walk in it and you'll find rest for your souls. Well, the ancient paths are the paths of the scriptures, ancient paths of what God has said in his word. That's right. Many people have a new way of doing things today. Well, let's just look at the old paths. And the old paths are taking God seriously at his word. That's what faith is. Faith comes to God and believes that he is, and he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. And so it's just the old path. And notice what it says in Jeremiah 6 and verse 16. He says, stand in the way and Seek and ask for the old paths, where, is the good, uh, when, where you'll find rest for your souls. And then the words are, the people said, no, we will not walk in it. So as we talk about the new paths versus the old paths today, and talk about a real true new beginning, I hope we'll all be, not be resistant like these people in Jeremiah's day, but right. take serious what it has, has to say as we want to focus on a new beginning. Yeah, let's let's continue to talk more about that as we turn to your blog. Folks, if you haven't been over to BobRebaker.com, get over there, check it out. At the very least, sign up for the blog. It'll show up every Monday for you. Um, but there are a ton of resources over there. Um, I'm sure that some of those resources could make some great Christmas gifts, Bob. That's just a guess. Well, when this is when this goes is released on January third, we're past it. But you know, oh, anybody no, you're can right. give <laughs> give a belated Christmas gift. That's right. That's right. <laughs> or That's right. or you could instead of being late for this year, you could be early for next year. Right. <laughs> you know, there's no better time than now, as we already talked about. But let's continue to talk more about a new beginning. <laughs> Well, as I wrote in the article, it's the, it is the season with the fresh start on the new year that we think about starting afresh on a lot of things, and people will make new goals and present new challenges and turn the pages of the calendar. And, and in many ways, the new year does bring some new beginnings, all right, maybe even the thought of a fresh start with the new year. But in Isaiah's presentation of the new covenant, in which he brings a word from the Lord that includes God's promises of a new beginning, listen to these words, really good. It says, in Isaiah 43 and verse 19, Behold, I am, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth, you do not perceive it, it will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. It seems like something, this is totally outstanding. Well, that's why it's called the New Covenant. It describes what God is going to do in the future, from the future of the time that they were in, in Babylonian captivity to the time that, that the Lord Jesus Christ came and even beyond. But anyway, Isaiah was blessed to see many aspects of the New Covenant blessings. Now, Jeremiah, in the midst of devastation in Jerusalem, is able to look sensibly upon the present, present circumstances and still have hope as he considered the mercy and steadfast love of God that are new every morning. As he says in Lamentations chapter 3, this I recall to mind, therefore I have hope that the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases, his mercies never come to an end, they are new every morning. You want a new beginning? Every morning there's a new beginning. Yep. God says, here's a fresh start. 
I love what it says in uh, Psalm 68 and verse 19, that every day he loads us up with benefits. <laughs> so stop yeah. and think about that, JT. You was, get loaded up afresh yeah. every day with the benefits from God. Yeah, if that doesn't blow you away, I don't know what will. Um, <laughs> you know, when you add that to the promises, when you add that to all the things that Scripture says about what our God does for us, it's, yeah, it's pretty hard not to get hyped up. That's right. Well, going on in this theme of a new beginning, the Apostle Paul reminds us that anyone who is in Christ is in Christ by a new birth, it's, or he calls it a new creation. Consequently, the psalmist reminds us that God has brought to us a new song, as he reminds us to sing that new song is unto the Lord. Listen to these words in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 17. First of all, it says, Therefore, if anyone is in Christ... He's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. That is the new beginning right there in our lives when God brings us by his power and his grace to the Lord Jesus Christ. We believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and find salvation in him and him alone. That's a new beginning, JT. Yeah, that's pretty awesome, man. You know, one of the things that just keeps popping in my head as an example, um, and those listeners out there that are parents will know exactly what I'm talking about. If you have kids that have gone through the quote unquote new math, which to me is an oxymoron, (laughs) Um, it doesn't make any sense. The common core stuff, what it was, was it started off as, as probably somebody with great intention. But the simple fact is, you know, like we need to go back to scripture, like we need to go back to the old ways and we need to understand Mm -hmm. them and we need to understand how God got us there. It's, you know, this common core thing. When you look at our, our international math ranking for the United States, we have done nothing but bomb down it. I mean, we used to be very high. So what happened was, you know, people started to get fancy and thought they had new ideas and thought that they could go in a different direction and kind of lost faith in the old math. Come to find out the old math was actually the thing that was keeping us going. Yeah. Um, so maybe scripture's like that, Bob. Maybe we need to look back at the old ways and we need to understand <laughs> that all these newfangled um, things from the good idea fairy that shows up all the time. Maybe it, maybe it really doesn't mean anything, right? That's right. It, it, just going back to the simplicity of the Word of God and, uh, and, and it, not only taking it as what it is, the Word of God, but also uh, uh, acting upon it and applying it to our lives. Yep. Now, one of the ways, we, as we talked about, a person is new in Christ and there are new songs to sing and we need to apply ourselves to those things to put off the old and put on the new. And that's what it says in Colossians. He says, first of all, put to death what is the earthly in you, the sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. And he says, put those things away. But on the other hand, he says, put on then as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassionate hearts, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. And so as, as you must forgive, And forgiving one another as as the Lord has forgiven you, so must you also forgive. And above all these things, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. So when we're talking about the newness, okay, going back to the old paths is coming back to the simplicity of the Bible, coming back to believing the Bible and acting upon the Bible as the Bible is the word of God. And then there are things you put off and when you start in this walk and constantly those things keep coming back. And so you keep putting them off. But the main thing is you keep putting on what God has described here in the book of Colossians. I encourage you to read verses five through 17 of Colossians three. One other new one that I like to talk about JT and it's, it's a new year with new opportunities and a new beginning. May it be the year of accelerated spiritual growth maturity for you. As I wrote in the article, and as you apply your inst- the instruction from God and walking in His way, looking forward to the dawning of a new day. Here's what it says in Revelation 21. Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. 
And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God will himself will be their God. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more. Neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain anymore, for the former things have passed away. What do you think of that, JT? That sounds like pretty good news, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, man, it sounds incredible. And, and you know, yeah. it's, it's so funny how... Um, you know, I, I, I heard something actually in um, in that uh, that series chosen that you and I were talking about before we went on air, um, and it was really cool because one of the disciples who was trying to recruit another disciple actually said to him, "I tell you what, come and see." It was it was uh, the disciple he's trying to recruit was Nathaniel. They said, mm-hmm. you know, it was after the whole, "Can anything good come from Nazareth?" Right. He said, I tell you what, come and see. And I and if you I I will always refund your misery if you don't if you don't <laughs> find that he is the Messiah. And I love that. I you can always refund your misery, but why not do what God says? Right? There you go. Yeah. 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 Um so what else is happening, Bob? Anything you want the listeners to know about or? Well, I thought it'd be a good time to, to talk about the book Running to Win. It's a new year, a new time to, to apply yourself in the race of life. And uh, I took some principles from doing Ironman triathlons and applied them to our spiritual walk with the Lord and, and running the race of life. And the, the book is called Running to Win. You'll find it at BobBrewBaker.com. Click on the resources when you go there. Scroll down to the books and then from the books, look for the book Running to Win. Also, you'll note the sermon links for the sermons I preach here at Christ Community Presbyterian Church in Clearwater, Florida. Finished, of course, a a real interesting series through the book of Isaiah for our Advent series. And, of course, January is the time I'm starting a new series, and that's going through the book of 2 Peter. I considered uh, 1 Peter last year. This year, it's 2 Peter. So begin that here in January. Well, check it out. Sermon links, books, and more, and you'll find it at bobbrewbaker.com. Man, so good. Well, this is the Power Break Podcast. I'm JT, along with Bob Rubaker, and this is time on the podcast for questions and answers. If you have a question for me or for Bob, feel free to email me at jt at bobrubaker.com, and we'll get to answering it on an upcoming Power Break Podcast. So are you ready for question number one, my friend? Well, let me ask you a question. Uh, you know, we're talking about, you know, kind of poking at the fact sometimes people make New Year's resolutions. Do you have any resolutions or goals that you're talking about for the coming year of 2023? Oh, they're actually, we're in it now. Is it 2023? Well, you know, it's it, it, it's funny. I My resolution is one that I've done multiple times before, and really it's one that I do throughout the year. And that's when I realize, I stop, and I realize that I kind of took over the reins a little bit. My resolution is always, okay, let's get back to scripture, turn it back over to him and, <laughs> and, and stop making my life a drain wreck. Cause I'm pretty gifted with that. When I, when I take the reins, I know what will end up happening. That's just kind of the way it works. So that's always yeah. like a continuing resolution for me, but I don't have anything like, you know, I'm going to lose weight or I'm going to get faster on the bike or anything like that. I, I, um, yeah, I you know I've never been a big res- New Year's resolution guy. I try to make them like throughout the year. How about you? I'm with you. I I've tried to make new goals, new resolutions, even goals. I, I can see because goals you put some um, purpose behind it, as well as you know some emphasis behind what you want to accomplish, and then you break it down into bite sized pieces, and you can you can work the goal. And I'm I'm sure that we do that without even thinking about it because of things that come up. But, you know, uh, my desire, I guess you would say, maybe a resolution is to write a couple more books this next year. And, uh, of course, it's the year of celebration, 2023, because, believe it or not, JT, in March, I turned 70. And, oh, uh, that's crazy, man. <laughs> uh, you should not be in better shape than me. Maybe that should be my <laughs> resolution, getting as good a shape as Bob. And then, of course, uh, Jan and I are looking forward to June uh, we decided to start our 50th wedding anniversary celebration early, even though this June it's it's uh, 49 years. So we're going to be celebrating all year long. And then in October, it's a 40th anniversary of my um, when I was first ordained to ministry. So 
Wow! Congratulations, man. When, let me let you me. With all that, sa- what's that? that? Well, all that says is says Bob Brubaker, you are old. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I I will tell you, man. I if nobody else does, and I'm sure other people will. I just have to thank you for just dedicating yourself to to the gift that God gave you, which is not only sharing the gospel, but teaching it and and really making sure that you disciple others and all the things that you and Jan both do. You know, you should be, I, I know we need to keep a check on our own pride, but man, I'm proud of you. How's that? Well, there you go. I appreciate that, JT. Yeah, buddy. All right. I'm going to get to question number, uh, I'm going to stop lavishing compliments on you, and I'm going to get to question <laughs> number one. Uh, all right. Your blog, it, it had a combination of new and old like things that we need to focus on for the coming year. So, so help me get the two straight and, and, you know, which one we need to, well, I, I, I don't know if there's one we need to focus on more than the other. Let's talk about it. Okay. So first of all, the new things that, you know, begins with new life that we have in our Lord Jesus Christ, as the apostle Paul pointed out in second Corinthians chapter five, verse 17, there's a call to that in the scriptures, and we understand that the Spirit of God works in a person to prepare them to hear that call, the audible call of the gospel of Jesus Christ that uh, tells the accomplishment of the Lord Jesus Christ and saving us from our sins, and then a call to believe on Him and follow Him and do what He says, and to find the, the gift of salvation that is ours in Jesus Christ. That, of course, the newness of that. And the newness uh, really goes to the point that we um, say it's more than turning over a new leaf. It's more than just making new resolutions. It is actually a new life that is completely different. And really, that new life continues to be new every morning with God's mercies, as we pointed out from the book of Lamentations, chapter 5, or chapter 3, rather. It's new every morning. So every day when we wake up, it's a new opportunity to serve God. It's a time to look back and say, thank the Lord that those things are behind us. As the Apostle Paul said in Philippians chapter 3, I forget those things which are behind, and I press forward for the mark of the prize of the call, high calling in Christ Jesus our Lord. And so when we look at new, there's, it's a new way, it's a, it's a new opportunities, it's new and fresh, it's different. But unfortunately, sometimes people have taken the word Christianity and the principles of the Bible and made them into something new and different and watered down the gospel. And they've sometimes uh, watered down the requirements of the, of the a law of God even And instead of Jesus saving us from the penalty of the law, for all of us are lawbreakers, they kind of make it palatable and present it in a new way. And that was what was going on in Jeremiah's day when Jeremiah said, okay, folks, it's time to stand by the roads and look and ask for the ancient paths, the paths that were good for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the path that was good for David in the Bible and Jeremiah and Isaiah and the prophets the pathway that was good for the apostles as they walked with the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we saw him go into heaven and then they went and preached the gospel to everywhere in the world at that time. The old paths, see and ask for the old paths, wherein is the good way? And then he says, and walk in it. That's the key to it. That means there's a new um, beginning because it's, instead of just drudgery going through the life, there's a new opportunity. It's new and fresh because your faith grows continually. It's new opportunities because God meets with you and, it, and spans your horizons to see things totally differently. And so here we are on the verge of a new year. So the old, okay, the old way of, the, of doing things by ourselves, we want to turn from that to the new way. But as we follow God, instead of following something that is new and different, we go back to the Bible and look for the ancient paths, what God has told his people in the past, we just are told to do it. Just walk therein. Yeah, you know, it's it's so funny. Like, I was, I was thinking about this the other day. We have always, it doesn't matter when, throughout Scripture you see it. The, there's the same pattern, right? You have um, Israel that was promised you know, basically their own kingdom. And they complained about the process of getting there. 
and lost their faith and had to be reminded over and over again. And then you fast forward, you've got the disciples who physically saw miracles over and over and over again. They still managed to lose their faith and they had to be reminded. You know, it was like, wow, it, wouldn't it be incredible if we could get out of that pattern, Bob? <laughs> Isn't it wonderful, though, when we, you know, talking about, you were talking about losing faith, it's becoming faithless. It's, and we haven't given up on the faith. It just, right. our faith becomes very small. Yeah, we stop acting second, on it. Yeah, that's yeah, correct. In 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 13, it says, even if we are faithless, he remains faithful. Yeah, it's mm. awesome. I love it. Absolutely yeah. love it. All right, so question number two from the mental aspect. How should we mentally approach the new year and the new opportunities that come with the new year? I think maybe looking at the text I mentioned in the article from Isaiah 43 and verse 19, to consider the new year as a new opportunity to serve the Lord and see what new things he brings as far as new opportunities or maybe uh, uh, the same opportunities but giving us a fresh way to look at things or a fresh a view of the faith that we need and strengthen our faith so we do it in a new and and you're not just going through the motions but really an exciting way yeah, that's when he says behold i'm i'm doing a new thing it, it springs forth that uh, uh that you do not perceive i will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert it means he's going to provide the refreshment along the way and we so maybe the new way of doing things and our new approach is to understand our total dependency upon God and see how fresh he makes things even the things that we might consider drudgery yeah that's, and that's super important you know and and that's it, 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 that applies a lot to my to the Years since I retired, and it's so funny that I can say years now. Um, <laughs> but in the years that I've retired, you know, there really has been um, a tendency towards kind of taking things for granted. But then all of a sudden you wake up and you realize it, in a new way what's actually going on around you. Like um, Amy and I were talking about that a little bit, about how, you know, despite... Um, the rougher times getting resettled up here and, and, you know, kind of going through all that, you know, they're really like when I got home, I felt like I got home, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. uh, from my trip, I felt like, all right, I'm, as they say up here, I'm back in the holler. I'm ready to go. <laughs> um, but it's, it's seeing that everything through a new lens that really is is the the thing that allows you to do that right um i think that's a great way to put it jt is, is the newness is the new lens we're looking at it through the, the lens of trusting christ through this situation and so it is right. a new way of looking things yeah. too very good very all right good, my friend JT. guess what we're gonna do now all right physical here okay. it is and I knew you were going to do this just simply because, you know, we always do this at the beginning of the year. And Vinny's making it. I think an I hear Vinny. Yeah. Yeah. I Vinny. don't know what's going Hello, on. Hello, Vinny. So, how do you begin a new fitness routine coming into your new year? Because a lot of people set that resolution and, you know, it's, it, it is important, especially if you've fallen away from it. Well, I came up with seven things, JT, to think about as you begin a new um, time of f any fitness. The first thing is to ditch the all or nothing mindset. In other words, some people say, oh, I'm going to start out and I'm going to start out hard and I'm just going to go for it. Well, the problem is after a couple of workouts, it, it goes away. And so it's best to start with what is called baby steps just to get things going. The second is to work with the time that you have before beginning to make big changes in your schedule. The third thing is doing something that you really like doing. And uh, fourth is to meet your body where it is instead of thinking how it should be down the road. And, of course, thinking long-term, uh, the long-term for any kind of workouts. And then stick to the basics. Don't get fancy and avoid, qu uh, avoid those get-fit-quick schemes, <laughs> yeah, of course. That's for sure, yeah. It's really good to share your goals with another person, particularly, as we mention all the time, it's really good to have a coach. Yeah, I agree, man. You know, and those get get fit quick things, man, it, they're not long-lasting. 
even though we always fall yeah. for it. You know, a lot of times, like, we'll start a diet, and we're like, oh, you know, I can do this for a long time, and chances are you can't. So um, just be realistic about, you know, when you start. Don't overdo it, like you said. And getting a coach, man, I could not agree more with that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it takes discipline as you head into the new year to make sure that you start and you're looking forward to a long term uh, with the fitness goals that you have. It takes discipline. As they always say, discipline makes the difference in all aspects of life, folks. Check out today's podcast at BobRubaker.com. Click on the Power Break podcast. Today is show number 231. And submit your questions by email to jt at bobbrewbaker.com, and we'll get to answering your questions on an upcoming Power Break podcast. I think Vinny wants to take over this podcast. (laughs) Well, the problem is, and I can't fix this right now unless we stop recording, is that the bug guy is here, and he's walking around the house driving Vinny nuts, so... Ah, gotcha. Unbelievable. Well, folks, before, you, before we go today, a quick word for uh, Running to Win, the book we're talking about on today's podcast. Check it out at BobRubaker.com. Well, thank you for joining us for the Power Break Podcast. Please subscribe and listen to Vinny, apparently, or leave a review wherever <laughs> you've downloaded the podcast. And check out notes, news, Bob's weekly blog, and other cool things at BobRubaker.com. And listen next time for the Power Break Podcast.